All right, cool. Chris, I don't have a, I don't have like a snazzy intro like you. Do you want to do the signature yeah. intro? <laughs> What's up, party people? This is Chris Rose. All right. Hey, our body. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I want to talk about um, DeFi snake oil salesman and investor ignorance that's my those are the topics that i want to get into i'll tell you why this hit me is that uh, so i've heard this word defi being like a little bit right like i've heard it here and there and seen it in articles have no idea what the what the hell it actually means like i i do not know but i know that this term is out there then like two days ago i saw a tweet from bruce fenton who said uh something like all of the DeFi pitches that people have given to me, the majority of them seem like they're just like unlicensed securities. And I was like, oh God, here we go. We, this is, this, we, we know this thing again. And, um, and then it was just like, like five or six times in the next 48 hours, DeFi, 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 DeFi. And so I'm like, okay, this, I know what this is. Like this, this sounds like, Whenever there's one of these terms that I don't know what it is, and I'm like, well, this sounds like a little emperor's new clothes because like I'm in the space. And so I was like, oh, well, just, just let, me, let me just Google to see. And this Forbes article is like one of the first thing that, things that comes up. It's from April. And it's like why everyone, the, the headline is why everyone in crypto is talking about DeFi. And then it says, uh, 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 it's, uh, a new movement is pumping oxygen into the cryptocurrency industry despite asset prices that remain 75% lower than where they were in late 2017. It's called DeFi, short for decentralized finance. It's the notion that crypto entrepreneurs can recreate traditional financial instruments in a decentralized architecture outside of companies and government's control. And I was like, what? okay, yeah, but that doesn't sound like anything new. The second, the first sentence of the second paragraph says, Bitcoin and Ethereum are the original DeFi applications. So I'm like, wait, so is this? <laughs> it's blockchain by another name, maybe. It's really, yeah, what I'm saying. <laughs> blockchain by another name. And, and uh, our friend Peter Ryan was like, pointed out to me that you have been speaking recently about this idea of um, these words being repackaged or ideas being repackaged with new words as a, a, a way for people to search for investor ignorance. And I thought that was a really interesting concept and it's related to a lot of things that I've been thinking. So I just wanted to get your thoughts. Could you like, I mean, what is your thought on this whole DeFi thing? And then the investor ignorance part, can you give like your thesis on, on that whole concept? Yeah, well, I, you were reading off the fourth piece. I was looking at my phone to find it. It's written by Jeff Coughlin. Do you know this person? I don't know him, no. Yeah, no, I don't know him either. Um, I'd be curious to know what prompted him to write this. It, mm. it seems like it seem it seems like these things. What is it? I mean, it, it's it's almost like the marketplace of ideas gone blockchain and weird. Where <laughs> like the idea, so to speak, is like a, a word. I mean, we we would call it a buzzword in the '90s, but these have like become mm. its own life form at this point online. And and so I think like the marketplace assesses like the faith in this word or something along those lines. And it floats it out there. And it sees who takes a bite, who takes a nibble. And then if another like affinity, trusted affinity bites, and then another one bites, and then it ideally creates like a chain reaction where more and more people come, that mm -hmm. sort of reifies this, this word. And then from there, you, you never know what'll happen. In the case of blockchain, everyone lost their damn minds <laughs> and you know, started their own countries. Uh, with DeFi, you know, has yet to be determined if that's going to happen. Um, Isabella Kaminska, to her credit, pointed out to me that this was happening even in the 90s in weird ways. But back then, it was more coupled to, like, discrete things. So, uh, like, object-oriented programming, you're a programmer, you're yep. aware of what that sure. is, right? Sure, okay. Yeah, so that's not necessarily just a buzzword. But, like, in the 90s, apparently, uh, this was a little bit before my time, object-oriented programming was new, mm. and so the banks rushed... To, to do the thing with the word that was the object-oriented thing. And they were going to object-orient everything and <laughs> find great efficiencies there. And so lots of money was spent on this, this process. Before like the Gang of Four, uh, you know, like the design patterns arrived mm -hmm. on the scene. Mm -hmm. So like for the non-programmers, there, there was a sort of like period before people knew, even knew really how to make objects uh, efficient in any way. Um, and so like the, the earliest patterns, I think, were like just folders for like structures. Yeah. And, uh, 
uh, functions, right, as opposed to like new ways of thinking. In any case, uh, with all of the, the mania around object-oriented programming in the 90s, very little uh, actually occurred because it was just kind of before the time and the enthusiasm preceded the application. Mm. Well, I think here in the modern era, we have a similar thing happening, except that the application is kind of just non-existent. It's just, just the word. And then I guess people hope to see what happens from there. But I, I don't know. It's very Keynesian. Um, I will say, like, I don't, I don't know if I should be embarrassed about this, but have you, have you read The Society of the Spectacle? Oh, I, yeah, I, I have it. I have it here. That's funny. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I, I, can't, I hate to say this, but, like, there's, there's, like, some degree of correlation between the concepts in that book and, and what we see here, mm -hmm. um, and it pains me greatly because I'm not like a late stage capitalist person. I, I think that's a not, not necessarily a productive way of thinking, but like I, there are remnants of that in, in some of these hype cycles that I can't deny. So I don't mm -hmm. I don't want to draw that like the communist conclusion that we're going to do like a kumbaya workers of the world thing. But at the same time, I, I can't help but to think there's a stage of mania in the economy that is uh, at, le at least a paralleled by some of some of the considerations in that literature. Okay, so so this is interesting, and it's interesting that you brought up this object-oriented programming because one of the things that I see with these buzzwords, I mean, we're saying buzzwords, but one of the things that seems to pull them all together is that they all have, they all end up being abbreviated, and I think that there's something to the idea of spectacle and the abbreviation. So it's like object-oriented programming. It's you always see it as OOP, which is like oop, right? It's kind of cool. DeFi is kind of cool. ICO, it looks kind of cool, all of these things. Blockchain, not so much, I guess. But what, like, do, do you think that there's something to that, that it's almost like by, my, my thought on this, I was thinking about this topic and I was like, it's almost like by abbreviating it, abbreviating it you add this like vagueness to it, to where it takes out that. So it's like, oh, well, I'm dealing with it as like DeFi. I don't know whether that's like a populist thing where it's like, oh, let's not say decentralized finance. Let's say DeFi or let's say, uh, let's write it as OOP. You know, is it, does it mystify it? Does it demystify it? Is it popularizing it? Like, what do you think that is? Because it's definitely like an emergent property of all of these things. It seems like, or most of them. Yeah, I mean, again, there's like this slider thing going on where like it's, it was anchored in some level of application. So like I, I, what's coming to mind is like Ajax, yes. again, in the programming realm. Again, yes. Right. So Ajax, for those that don't know, was this new word that was coined, uh, a neologism, I believe is what that is. Yes. Uh, a newly coined word. And it, it was coined around a, a technology that was sort of like proto-developing, mm -hmm. which was uh, the ability to load in JavaScript a, a URL on a page that was open, like a very like esoteric thing. Mm -hmm. And it did come to embody what became mainstream and a huge backbone of modern web applications. Sure. And absolutely. yeah. And, and, and weirdly was like the progenitor of uh, web 2.0, which I, I don't know what happened absolutely. there. Right. But you remember that that was kind of like a whole big thing um, that was itself like the spawn of Ajax maybe. So like this notion of web 2.0 was like a, like a movement that was both the interactivity of web pages uh, coupled with like a design aesthetic and maybe like a, a, mm -hmm. name, a choice of domain mm -hmm. aesthetic as well. This was in like what, the mid to, uh, this was like 2005, I want to say. Yep, the, that sounds right. The aughts. Yeah. That sounds right. So, right. So I, I, I wonder if this is like either speculators trying to like borrow from what worked in the past, albeit without the, mm. like the underlying technology uh, behind the, the buzzword. Um, or, or, if, or if maybe I'm just kidding myself and then like, this is what happened back then too. It's just that we hadn't seen it over you know, time and time again and hadn't been able to contextualize it in the way that we are now. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, with, with DeFi, what it strikes me about it is, is that like the virtue in blockchain has hit its peak and we still have to pamp this thing. So let's just, let's just sort of resyndicate it now under the new moniker and see what happens mm. and, and who knows maybe that's all we need i don't like these are these are these are like Keynesian beauty games in a lot of ways you know like that's like the goal is to sell these things to the next person and then it, it, ideally it you know becomes an avalanche which was what we saw with blockchain so who knows but do you do you so 
do you th- what effect do you think then because I, I i so i am going to say that yeah it seems to me back at the envelope calculation that DeFi is just blockchain but something became toxic about selling blockchain do you think that that was like the bitcoin not blockchain movement do you think that that was because people would look up blockchain and then they would see andreas antonopoulos saying you know uh, blockchain is bullshit and all of what do, do, do you think that that's what it was that it was made uh, that it was turned into a uh, a bad word. It was turned into a curse word in some ways, and so they so the goal was well, we have to we're n- we're not done. We have to search for something else for this, and and they moved it away from the technical, which I find interesting. Right, like decentralized finance sounds like okay, we're moving this away from the sphere. You guys can't be trusted over here. You developers can't be trusted. The technical people can't be trusted. We're going to move this over to the accountants, the brokers, all of that. Do you think that, that that's a, kind of a, a valid way of looking at it? It's not a valid way of looking at it. Yeah, I, I've thought about this a lot. I, I have a bit of like a, a blockchain PTSD thing going on, like blockchain <laughs> shop here. Like, like you guys are maybe, I don't know who's watching this, but some of you might be new or some of you might be the old timers, but, but like you're talking, like from my perspective as somebody who was in the trenches, mm-hmm. uh, I saw what turned into like, Honestly and truly, like a neckbeard board game night <laughs> turned into like all of a sudden the entire world was here wanting to know yeah, all kinds yeah, of things yeah. about what it is we've been doing. And, and that was cool. And then like the, the crowd started thinning out a little bit, but, but like in between, you know, even the start of it and the end of it, everybody and their mother showed up and like the exposure to different cultures and ways of life and like mm. uh, comprehensions, it was a bit like wild for me. So yeah, so I think there's like two things that are probably worth considering uh, here. I, I guess n- number one is like every generation does have its ignorances that I think are left over from the school curriculums and the societal trends of the past. And like it's, it's very wishy-washy. So like, yeah, you could say there's like generations, which is what we, we do for shortcuts, mm-hmm. you know, like Gen X versus millennials versus Gen Z, whatever. Um, but like there's also, you know, there's truth to like, okay, I guess we, we maybe – started like common core curricula in the mm-hmm, school mm-hmm. system, or right? So like, it's, it's going, there's going to be an ignorance as a result of that. Like, we don't know what that is yet, but when those people come to age, it'll manifest in, in a way that's probably going to be spectacular. And, uh, and so I think that that's part of what happened here in blockchain. Um, frankly, I, th- I think, you know, without getting too political, I think a lot of like the sharing, caring, like Mm. A lot of it's left over from what I think was like Star Trek level, like aspirations of the future. Mm. Uh, but like raising of children in like the eighties and nineties, like, okay, we're, gonna, we're all going to do this together with technology. And, and so that equal trust maybe. And then like mm. blockchain came around and everyone was primed to like trust technology without skepticism at some level. Mm. And, and to their credit and our credit, like it performed really well, you know, from like 1996, uh, even up until now. So yeah. That like it, that latent ignorance was there in terms of like faith and technology that a lot of the prospectors I think like seized on. So like that's one really big thing that I suspect happened and may still be happening. The other thing, and this is this is even this is actually like a big scandal that I don't think is really uh, popped yet. But um, one of the things that I think made America wonderful was the uh, equi- the securities market that we have here in the, the, the New York Stock Exchange. The ability for Americans to invest in promising American companies and share in the success of these companies. Like, that's been a wonderful part of being an American. However, uh, I think that the regulations in recent years have really done a number on those opportunities. Now, it's very hard for young people to really get excited about some of these stocks in the way that I think prior generations were able to do because of all of the um, qualified investor regulations and in addition to uh, I guess just Frank Dodd related uh, requirements that are preventing corporations from um, IPOing early and providing access to the market. So uh, because of that second component there, I think that blockchain was extra compelling because now we have a market where people can invest at a level that is early stage and um, promising uh, in, in terms of you know, rampant growth. And so those two forces, I think, came together for blockchain and whether or not it'll come together for DeFi. I don't know. We'll see. I'm a little skeptical. But who knows? <laughs> the what you were saying about this change in like population, like the state of the population and influx of people and people moving. I had been like toying with this idea recently that 
we're in Bitcoin's kind of Wild West phase that uh, like the Wild West people don't realize was only like 30, it only lasted like 30 years. And it was just when they laid the railroads down, the Old West, which had been there for literally hundreds of years, right? The, and it was mainly like the Spanish and a few year, other European settlers and the Indians and whatnot. And they had their own culture and it was hundreds of years old. And then they laid the railroads down and it was like, oh, you don't have to take a dangerous ass wagon train to get out here. Like little towns started popping up. People went out to like find their fortune. And of course you had like endless amounts of scammers and snake oil. That's where the snake oil salesmen came in, you know, because you could get from place to place. And I almost feel like the infrastructure was built up in such a way that like around probably starting in like 2015, those were probably like the, the railroads were laid down to where like there were wallets that were good. There were, um, you know, the exchanges were kind of solid, like all of this whole situation. And then, and you know, and Ethereum. So you had some other like on ramps for people to come. And um, that, that we may be in this wild west phase at the moment. And that so, so I, I guess what I'm wondering is, like, you talk about the snake oil salesman sort of situation. Clearly, we need new ideas, and we definitely need something to bring in new capital. There's no doubt about that. Like, some new idea has got to catch. But how do we, how do we determine what's, what's the snake oil? Who are the snake oil salesmen? Like, are there any tools from after having been through this in a couple of cycles that you have? Snake oil salesmen from hmm, hey, that's interesting. That might actually work. That might be a good idea. Yeah. You know, it, it, the stories get told in weird ways, but don't forget that in the 90s, the dot-com boom was just full of snake oil. Oh, yeah. And it, was, it wasn't until the crash that we actually started to make productive solutions again. And so I would expect that that would probably happen here as well. Um, I, you know, there's this short-term thinking that kind of pervades these spaces in, in times of manias. And, and like, it just gets progressively shorter and shorter and shorter term until eventually, um, you know, the, the, the level of consideration on this stuff is just zero. And it's like impulse control gone and bye, 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 FOMO, FOMO, FOMO. So like, you know, there are cartoons about that. We've all seen them. Um, for me, like the, the, the things that, so like the, the notion of the scam, I think is underplayed, which is weird because like everyone talks about scams, but they don't know the etymology of the word. Um, the word the scam. Scam? Scam, you're saying? The word well, scam? The, yeah. The word scam, um, is, scam. The, the word scam is, right, is, unless I check the, the etymology, it's off the top of my head, but I think it's clear. Uh, the word scam comes from the word scamp with a P at the end. So uh, scamp is a name for a carny operator, uh, somebody who runs the carnival games. That is a scamp. And his product is the scamp. And so then you can kind of look to that at some level of inspiration. And I, I think one that would serve here in, in that, well, the games that are at carnivals are often games that are played on a mark who is a mark because he's, he's arrogant. He, he thinks he's a genius. And the scamp is uh, playing into the, the feeling of superiority that, that the arrogance that the mark has. Uh, they, they show him a game that looks really simple and like anybody can do it. And certainly you can do it because you're the big guy and, uh, you don't want to let, and then, and then there's a degree of like pressure that goes on to it from there. You know, you don't want to let your girl down. She wants a you know, stuffed teddy bear. All you got to do is shoot like three baskets into the <laughs> basket. You know, yes. yeah, it, you get the you get the game. So um, there's a lot of that, I, I think, in the markets where like the arrogance that people have in terms of like what it is that they think about how markets work, or what it is they think about how finance is, is very much guided by some degree of um, arrogance like like I, I'm not gonna let's not make it simple here um, what is an easy trope uh, free markets like okay fine free markets is a great like ideal okay wonderful ideal mm -hmm. and, and you know, we've all had it to some degree but there are people who have it to the degree that, like nothing else matters but this word of free market so if that's your level of cognition all, all this camp has to do is show you free market coin and provide no more mm. supplemental literature and then you're, and then you're going to be inclined to just be like, well, that's the product I've been waiting for. Free market coin right there. I've been saying it. I knew this would fly. Watch everybody. I'm a genius. I'm going to buy a free market coin. And uh, lo and behold, that, that level of surety is in fact what the scam makes his money off of because all, all it is is a word and uh, there's nothing under the hood in that case. So that's kind of an endemic pattern, I think. 
Uh, we, we're often, I, you know, like, I'm, I'm returning to like the, the notion of the mouse trap. Like people are like so blinded by their greed, like they want the free cheese, and they don't, they don't even bother to look at the contraption around the free cheese. They're just like, ah, oh, I grab that, and then. Uh, of course, the person who thought one step ahead is, is the one who really makes out on the deal. So it's kind of like a lost, lost leader for that guy. And yeah, I, I think that those are the common patterns in this space that you have to watch out for. But it's very hard because like, you, you have to, in yourself, uh, identify what it is you don't know about yourself, which is, which is almost an impossible task. It requires some level of deference to authorities, which nobody likes around here. But, um, and, and you got to be careful with that, you know, because like some authorities, again, are just another scam themselves. But uh, if you're wise about it, the authorities are going to be found in books that are well reviewed yes, by peers yes. and that have a history and that uh, have been vetted, um, you know, for, for a significant degree of accuracy. Um, another thing I'd say too is like this, I, this is always rubbing me the wrong way and like we, we, I do it too, but, but um, some people are really bad about it. The blocking of, disgusting information like i think there's a time and place when you got to do it i'm not saying that's wrong but when it comes to investments i like to seek out the disgusting information on my investments because that's where i'm going to find out how stupid i am and uh it, it's it's a very delicate balance there but i think that the people who are like ignorant of that level of peer review are going to find that that just creates a degree of arrogance and surety that will be nabbed by the scam so these are rough, rough themes. I don't know if you've got more I, to add. I, no, it's it's really actually it's making me it's 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 making me think of a, a lot of things that I've been thinking lately. First, first thing is that it seems to me that the those who are are the most stable within this space are the ones who approach this space as an opportunity to learn about themselves and to learn like through their investments. To, to find their own weaknesses, as you said, right? So it's like, because it's a very good way to find your weaknesses. Like, ooh, I won yeah. on that one. That's good. But it's really the ones you lose on where like, how did I go wrong there? What did I think was wrong? How did this go yeah. wrong? And you kind of get it in real time, right? But, I, but also this idea, this idea of, I think that some people have, and it's going to, to your last point there, that it's almost like uh, about the blocking the disgusting information that it's almost like I don't want to see this because if I do, I will doubt my investment. And if I doubt my investment, I'm, all these people have told me that I'm going to lose out. Like if I get scared, there's these two competing narratives. Like I, I was, it was so weird when this recent like sell off was happening after this back thing. And I was seeing this narrative come out from various different camps all and and it was like don't sell your pussy like if you sell you're a pussy and then even the Winklevoss one of the Winklevoss twins I think Cameron was like uh pro tip Spartans hold like there was this whole narrative about like tough macho guys won't sell and only pussies will sell and so it's kind of the situation where it's like, ooh, I can't have the cognitive dissonance that would make me doubt this investment that I've made because now I have more information because then I'll make the pussy move. So it's like this, this um, is, is it machismo? Is it machismo? Is that what's, what's driving They're, it? Yeah, they, they want the teddy bear for their girlfriend. That's what's going on in that. Yeah, it's like the same yeah, yeah, emotional yeah. pull. You know, it's it's like you can't get three three baskets. You can't get you know, three balls in the basket, and your girl's gonna think you're a pussy. Like, come on. Uh, so yeah, there is some of that. The, people's identity gets wrapped into these things, and, and understandably so, because like mine sure as hell has. Um, and then you know, there's this. These are like bull games. You know, this is what bulls do. They charge, they mm. posture, and they spar, and they challenge, and they play territory games and, and confidence games, really. Uh, and, and there's a degree of, of charmingness to the whole damn thing, quite frankly. It's, uh, I, I don't know, I don't, maybe like there's some level of abstraction in markets for like um, fighting in sport, but it seems like it to me, and this is how that might yeah, manifest. Yeah. Uh, but some people just, they, they don't have a cool head. I mean, there's, the, the reason, you know, that bulls get slaughtered is because they, they don't, they don't, they, they don't uh, bow to reason uh, enough. And, and I, I will say on the other side too, like I admire courage a lot. I will say, I think the courage is very downplayed in the modern era and it's very rare to find truly courageous people uh, online or most places. They, they exist, but it's very rare. 
So like there's, there's a level of courage that goes into that that I, I do think is uh, admirable. But um, too much courage is a bad thing. And that's the thing. It's like people see black or white sometimes. And like that degree of like uh, us versus them or, you know, idealism and zealotry, that's, that seems to be when you really get taken for a ride. Hmm. It, it does seem like, you know, this whole space succeeds. And certainly those who are, it's this, it's this weird, like, very fine line between uh, appropriate levels of faith because you're like, you've seen a vision, you've, you're looking at this thing and you're like, you know what? I have faith in this and I'm going to sell it. And like, I respect the people who are, who have been evangelists and like, I bought into this thing, you know, not as early as you, but I mean, late 2012. And it was like, it was nothing but faith. But, I, and, but even at that time, I w- didn't necessarily think that the price was going to go up at all. In fact, I passed up a lot of opportunities to acquire more at a very low price, you know what I mean? As I'm sure probably you did it at, at times too. And so, oh, of course. yeah. And so it's, so, you know, there's this, there's this faith aspect and I have a great respect for that. But then there is this other like, it, is it a blind faith? I'm trying to look for like, like I'm I think even, it's zealotry. I think zealotry. It's just, okay. I think that's. I think that's the warning of zealotry. I, yeah, I'm not sure. It's these are these are like archaic uh, understandings of, of human nature that right. we seem to be crossing into, and and it, and it's good because like I think a lot of us kind of took this stuff for granted or just thought it didn't apply in the modern world, but then here it is, and maybe this is what we have to understand now. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's absolutely it's absolutely fascinating, and it's um, like I say, it's it it. I think Bitcoin and this this space is a real opportunity to find out about yourself. But uh, again, as you say, it's also so much of it is driven by the greed. Like I wonder if that greed wasn't there, if that. It's almost like, like you say, like the carnival games don't happen if you don't have the marks. You know, if everybody is, is just like, oh, I'm just here to like enjoy the carnival for what it is. Like have some cotton candy, run around with the kids, go on the rides, like fine. But then you don't have the whole, you know, row of carnival games. And it's almost like if that row isn't there, even if I'm not a mark and somebody who's going to play those games, I almost feel like the carnival is kind of shitty. I'm like, well, the carnival was cool, but you know, they didn't have any carnival games. Like I noticed there were no carnival games, not that I was going to play them, but to see that the people were there and there's activity. And so, you know, I wonder, is the space not better off for the weird zealotry and the weird machismo and the marks being taken as I don't want to see people taken for their money, but is the carnival almost better off for the fact that the marks have come to get fleeced for their money? I, I think... See, okay, here's another thing I wonder about, and this kind of gets into that. Like, th- there are people in society you're allowed to take money from, effectively rob. Like, that, that really is kind of the way society is. So, like, a fool, mm-hmm. for, first and foremost, yeah. um, it, it seems like you're allowed to rob with a fool. And, like, maybe you shouldn't, and maybe that doesn't make you feel good, but, like, in the, the scheme of things, there's a little pity for that person. And generally, there's no regulatory response. So, you know, there's all kinds of hows and whys, but um, if, you, if you think of the... the idea of the mark as being, you know, legitimate, as, as seems to be the case with carnivals, um, then you have to ask yourself, well, why is that legitimate? And I, I think that going back to this sort of primal uh, notion of justice, whatever that might be, um, I think people believe that if you take from the zealous, the, the zealots, that reduces their power in society, and maybe that is an efficiency in society. So it could be that when the system's working well, um, the, the most... Uh, volatile and uh, zealous among us are the ones who uh, lose the money and then we like return to a balance where like things are fun again. And, and I, I think that that's probably how that works, but I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I, I do think that like the, the zealot, the zealots will scare away the noobs in a way that is like kind of not helping the space, you know, when, when like somebody shows up and like, they're just kind of like, Hey, I want to learn about this crypto thing. And then like some guy gets in their face yelling like, be cashers must die, rot in hell, <laughs> right? Like, whatever you know, like they're gonna scare that person away, and then you're just gonna be like, well, that, I mean, that person, like, I don't know, that person was maybe like kind of cool. We should have at least like, you know, see what they wanted. Um, you didn't really help us, thank you, uh, but no, thank you. So like that, that guy should have to pay his money probably, 
um, so that we can have some degree of normalcy and civility back in the space. So that, that probably is what we want. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy like tussling, you know, getting rough, rough with people. Uh, I have a reputation for that. Um, and I, I like it. I've come to find just because I like it, it honestly, it, it's just like rough and tumble play, I guess, as like Jordan Peterson would call it, but like, you know, sparring. Um, and then, but then like you have to go around finding the right people to spar with. And right, what you'll find right. in society is that if you just go to like some average, like, you know, I don't know, Vietnam vet or something in the supermarket, like ain't nobody going to tolerate you sparring with that guy. But, you know, you, you take some punk, you know, like, I don't know, like, like skateboarder guy and you, you start, you know, in, in a you know, moderate way, start roughhousing with them. No one's going to care. They're going to walk by you. And it's, you know, it's just going to be like kids being kids, right. and whatever, you know. And so I, I, I think that society has these sort of fail safes in there to like, I don't know, to keep things roughly in balance some way with, with uh, the, the excesses of emotion. But I don't know, we're all, we're all kind of figuring it out. Like this being online, it makes everything kind of like a little weird. The, this, this thing about scaring off the noobs, I think is kind of interesting. I'm still thinking in my like Wild West analogy a little bit. And this idea of the, 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 the cowboys being rough, you know, and the gunslingers and all of this. And I'm thinking of like the, the frightened people who like, oh, you stay away from that town. Like it's a rough town, you know, but it's like, that's where the best gambling is. And they've got like the best yeah. whorehouse and like all of these yeah. things, you know what I mean? And, and I, I almost wonder if, I almost wonder if we've reached the point in some sectors of the space where there's just no longer any space for noobs to come in who are not wanting to play a poker game wanting to go to the whorehouse, wanting to get completely shit-faced drunk, and that it's like, in some way, that the, and I think these are the people that we're talking about tussling with, you know what I mean? That like, in some way, that's maybe just a stage of the, evol like, maybe those are the people that need to be there on the front frontier, because those are the only people tough enough to like, tame this thing. And maybe they just need to like, kill each other off and just die off at some point, you know, or maybe some tough ass sheriff comes up, you know, some Earp, Wyatt Earp type of situation and just clears them out, but only because they're, they're tussling. Like, what do you think? It was so easy to be a newbie to Bitcoin, like in 2012, 2011, 2013. Oh, dude, so easy. Everybody welcoming and nice. And, and there was funny, you know, trolling, but you didn't have all of the outlets to do it. But it was so easy and like nice and welcoming all around and nobody really telling you what you had to do. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You know? Right. I wonder I if, mean, I, yeah. I wonder if we just reached a phase where these newbies, they just can't come in like that anymore. It's just not, you're not going to come to the wild west like that. Well, I mean, the, the product that I think the space needs and is starting to get, and that I feel very strongly about that often gets tomatoes for, and you know, fuck you, those tomato throwers. Like here, we'll get to it. Um, <laughs> It is index products because that, that is a degree of like civil engagement with the space. So when the new person shows up and he's like, I know nothing, but I want to get involved. Now he has to go, he has to like shop around the mall of religions and figure out like which religion is the way of life that he needs to commit to with everything that he has in his bank account and forever and ever be like a member of that tribe. Well, that, that's not how the noobs work. Right. But with an indexing product, it could be um, like, okay, I'm going to, you know what I'm in, I'm going to put, you know what, I got like, uh, my portfolio is currently, you know, 40% bonds and 60% uh, stocks. You know, I'm going to take some money out of the stocks. I'm going to keep 10% of my net worth in crypto. Uh, but I don't, I don't know, you know, which, which uh, religion is the one true real holy religion. In fact, I think that there isn't one. I, I just kind of want some exposure to whatever the hell is happening on the frontier. And what's nice about a strategy like that is uh, they don't have to make it a lifestyle choice. Uh, they can continue being who they are. Um, they don't have to you know, devote their lives to a cause. Uh, in addition to that, like it'll be theoretically um, constant money coming in or out, but just like volatility, which in general is good for the market uh, as people are rebalancing to hit that percentage of their wealth. Like that product to me would speak to the noobs because we could just kind of go to it and be like, okay, well, uh, that, that's like this sort of like systemic investment in the space. And like, yeah, it is true that like, uh, you know, my God would, would spite you. But at the same time, like we can all now <laughs> you know, have like a little bit more money to work with in our religious force. So like that, that strikes me as a way that like you could cater to the dudes. And people are starting to offer that product, but it's not quite here yet. So it's a bit premature. And my hope then is that 
we have like a massive, I don't really want this, but, but I, I kind of do, um, like a massive drop in price. But in that doldrum, like this is when, the, when like the, the index product that everyone exactly wants arrives, um, like totally a hardware wallet secured and like all the bugs work out. And then we have this like 2002 recovery in the price where it is more reasonable again and uh, less religious, manic. I, I like this. I like this. And it's, um, it, it, you're, it, it's actually, it's something that I've never really thought about until you just like, I've heard, I, you know, I know, I understand the indexing idea. I've heard you talk about it before. I do it a, a bit myself, you know what I mean? Just by, by nature, because I'm pretty agnostic in terms of. Everybody does it to some degree. Yeah, right? exactly. Right. So, but you know, there is definitely, you can see in the overall financial markets, clearly there is a desire to have this like, okay, I want to invest. This seems cool out here. I want to invest in this space. But again, it's like, it's the town that I'm not going to go to. I know there's cowboys there and gunslingers. There's a religious cult that lives on the hill that comes down every once in a while and slits people's throats, like carries away children. Like this is the whole, it's not, this is not what I, this is not what I want to like personally go into. And I think that there was the, the narrative of Bitcoin has always been that like, you have to be deeply involved in this thing. Like not your keys, not your coins, right? It's like, you can't have an intermediary. You can't, and I mean, I'm even, I just did a thing about that saying that's what Bitcoin is. However, there is clearly this um, desire, and I think it's a good desire, and I think it's something that we should support, of people who want to be involved, but they don't want to get on the train and travel to the Wild West. They want to invest, they want to participate, and they shouldn't have to deal with any of our cult behavior. Like they really should not have to do that. But at the same time, I don't think that the answer is, and clearly the market doesn't think that the answer is, shit like backed, which might have been better had it been an index product, right? We might not have seen what we saw, but for them to just be like, well, we're gonna pick a religion, because that's what they did. They're like, we're picking the Catholic church out of all the Christianities. and and a more Eastern Orthodox church. And you cannot even, you cannot invest in anything else. You can do Eastern Orthodox futures and that's it. And, and um, maybe that's the turnaround, dude. Like maybe that's the turnaround in mindset is like, these are all children of Bitcoin. This all evolved out of the Bitcoin space. Um, you should you invest in the wild West. Don't just invest in tombstone. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's totally reasonable. I, and I, you know, the other thing too is that like we like so much of this space is determined by the regulators. It's the same way the Wild West was. Yeah. yeah. And and we don't know what those regulations are going to come in at yet. So like everybody's got all this certainty, and it's like, well, you know, for me, like I really like fungibility, but I also I, I admit that there's a very good chance that fungibility is going to be regulated to to zero liquidity. Yeah. And so like it's it, it may be that like that is where my heart is, or that's what like the competence even is. But it, that doesn't matter because like there's this risk that is the unknown that that nobody can responsibly tell you uh, is a surety, uh, even though that's what everybody you know, kind of does in various ways. Um, so right, yeah. I mean, these are and, and like it's it's a little perverse I get because like the indexers they 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 don't necessarily have a meaning that is their like central thesis, but that's okay because like you know um, American corporations don't have like a central thesis of meaning either. They they provide a product or a service and and they have like a corporate ethos and like they're you know they're going to index the world's information or whatever it might be, um, and that's fine and good in that building. But the investors should be able to have uh, multiple missions. It shouldn't have to be a zero sum game of the one true real purpose for being here. Uh, like I should be able to both go to the whorehouse and the saloon. I shouldn't have to choose one or right. the other. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Um... And it's, look, it's bringing more uh, value into the space, right? It's not just, not even just financial value, but it's bringing like mental value and people who care more about it and will care more. Because if you're invested in something, you care what happens and you, you care about educating yourself as new things come up because it's like, oh, well, maybe I should be adding that to my index. Oh, what is this? You know, and that's like Bitcoin has to have that. All of these currencies have to have that because people have to suspect that they're valuable. And the more people that suspect that they're valuable, well, then the value goes up. And so, yeah, man, I, th I think that that's, um, I think that's good. I think that's what I was, I think that's what I was hoping that, that 
that we could get to. I think we've, uh, I think we've rounded it out. I think that there's, there are some, I don't know that these things are going away. You know, like, I don't know that there's. I don't that away. I don't, yeah, I don't see that toothpaste out of the tube. It's, it's just a matter of how big it's going to be, in my estimation. Like, I, I, haven't, I haven't been sold on the hyper-Bitcoinization where, like, we throw away every single piece of paper that we have and replace it with right. Bitcoin. Right. Like, uh, yeah, like, it'd be nice and it maybe, but I'm not sold on it yet, so, so be it. But, um, and, and that's, a big, that's a big pill to swallow if you're new. Like, that you have to, like, be all in. It's, it's kind of like a, a bit, you know, for some people, it's a bit of a deal breaker. Um, I, I, I actually, what I would like to think, frankly, this is, this is something that I, I might be a little bit more mischievous than is reasonable here, but the, the zealots have been dominating the message uh, by way of their dedication and intolerance and uh, social media amplification uh, on account of those two factors. Um, so a lot of like the reason discussion is, is drowned out in, in, in lieu of, um, you know, what, what bit format is, is the one that God ordained. And so if those people are throwing the Hail Mary pass, and that's a big part of why it is that they're so committed, because their entire life's meaning and identity is in this one bag, um, what will probably have to happen is we have to burn that forest a bit, where the price goes down. Those people have to, you know, go back to working again, uh, at, you know, meal jobs. They are get humbled. And in, in so doing now, we can bring moderation back in. And maybe that's the process that needs to happen. And when moderation comes back in, we can start talking about maybe how wise zero sum games were and uh, how we can maybe compromise a little and achieve greater ends for all. Yeah. That'd be I dig it. I, don't know. I dig it. It's great, yeah. man. Hey, thank you for, thank you for doing this. I think we've, I think we've got it. That was, uh, that was great, man. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very I love, much. I love, I love hanging out with you. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, man. See ya.